Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And as always, for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content. Obviously, we're in the run-up, like I've said previously, to that Series 10 rule set coming into uh, official effect on the 1st of August. But we're taking this time now just to kind of look at some of the big teams. We've been doing that this week. We covered Kyoga and Xerneas and Zashin already. And today we're going to be covering, if you hadn't guessed already, uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex. So we've got three teams to kind of go over today. Obviously, we've got two quite standard ones and then another one which is just a different option the the thing with shadow rider calyrex is it has so many different options that you can run in this format uh, you've commonly seen it run with live orb one of the other options is focus sash and then you're kind of generally seeing something like choice scarf that is popping up around the ladder for sure and it can catch you out and um, common partners with it you're going to see the double fake out with the rillaboom incineroar it's very good core it supports the color x very well obviously the incineroar gives you a really nice synergy switch in for weaknesses um, and the intimidate as well is a real bonus but the big kind of partner that we're seeing uh, especially early format is the mind shell uh, because of the options that it's got it can't be faked out neither can shadow rider color x uh, you can fake out opposing targets. You've also got Wide Guard to kind of help protect Calyrex. You've got Faint. You've got so many different options. Close Combat, obviously, the attack and move, but you can go in here if you don't want Faint. You can go Help in Hand. Um, but Faint, I feel, is a pretty nice one because I think a lot of the time what players are going to do against you is they're probably going to try and throw a Wide Guard up against Calyrex, knowing that the majority of its attack and moves are going to be those spread attacks. Now, there is some ways to get around uh, the issues, obviously, expanding force we don't have um psychic terrain on the field here so uh, really it's going to be most of the time a single target attack unless your opponent brings that psychic terrain into effect uh, so you're not really worrying you've got the spread move here two single target attacks here and even if the psychic terrain is up you do have ways to kind of manipulate the field and make that into a single target attack if wide guard is an issue with something like rillaboom with the grassy terrain just turning that back into that single target attack the life orb just gives you that additional kind of damage output because it's just ridiculous and the big thing that you want to be trying to do with shadow rider color x is obviously trying to get that snowball effect get those knockouts um, and get the uh, the grim near ability kind of active get that plus one in special attack and then kind of just sweep through your team from there it's very momentum based shadow rider color x and um, if you can't stop it kind of getting that that momentum it's very difficult to kind of come back in some matches and um, obviously the mind share does help against the color x as well with that wide guard makes it difficult and a lot of mind games kind of start coming up uh, if you're in sort of a mirror match and um, you've got regieleki it's a great Pokemon for speed control in this format. We've seen it's top of the pretty much top five of the usage stats. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, you could go with Focus Sash on it. Magnet, I've chosen here because I think the Focus Sash is a little bit more beneficial on the Mind Show. And obviously the power output that you're going to get from the Regieleki is a little bit more useful. Incineroar, Rillaboom kind of speak for themselves. There's options where you could think about maybe going Assault Vest here, but I feel like in this particular build, where we'll probably not be switching uh, Rillaboom in as much, and that might be a little bit of a contradiction, um, I think the Miracle Seed with that extra kind of power on that priority attack of Grassy Glide is just uh, a little bit it kind of edges it for me at least and then the star of the show is the Suicune um outside of the Calyrex of course but Suicune a very good Pokemon another inner focus Pokemon can't be faked out very good very useful uh has defensive capabilities of taking Volt Switch from Magnet Boosted Regieleki it has Grassy Glide it, able to take that especially you can kind of support that further with your Intimidate support from Incineroar as well you've got nice switches in uh between the Suicune Incineroar Rillaboom obviously making up that Firewater Grass Core which is very nice offers a team tailwind and speed control which is great icy wind as well on top of that so it kind of plays a little bit like a bulkier slower uh, tornadoes in that respect where you'd see the tailwind and the icy wind just to kind of really disrupt what your opponent's starting to do if they are matching your tailwind at least um, and then snarl is a really nice option especially for opposing calyrex and just other big special attackers in the format skulls just generally quite good and leftovers is the option here i mean you can go something like whacking berry something like rindo berry but i feel like the recovery that you can get through leftovers and then with the grassy terrain kind of stacked on top of that is very useful so as always all the teams will feature to 
today as well my friends are down in the description below we'll have a few games of the teams once we've went through uh the the kind of the common builds we'll go over to this one now this is another common build that we're seeing at the moment uh especially color x paired up with the stack attack it gives you such good flexibility like really good offensive options at both ends of this the spectrum you know got the color x at the top end and then you've got the stack attacker at the bottom end and uh, the trick room in this format i think we'll start seeing a little bit of a rise in usage i think trick room is very strong it's just being able to kind of get that trick room set up which sometimes is quite difficult in this format because of the overwhelming damage output from a lot of these big restricted pokemon the fake out disruption that we've got <laughs> like in abundance and also um the the taunt all those sort of things that can kind of come into play to kind of stop it. And obviously, Amoongus is a big issue as well for a lot of teams now that we don't have Dynamax kicking around. So it's a pretty similar build. You're going to see a lot of the Calyrex teams with similar builds, same kind of like grounding fundamentals in there. Rillaboom, Incineroar again in here. We went for an Assault Vest one in this, this particular build just to give Rillaboom a little bit more staying power. I've got the Focus Sash on Calyrex there. It gives you a little bit better of an advantage against opposing Calyrex, especially those Scarf ones are kicking around. Uh, at least you're able to take an attack and then knock out in return, you know? So you've got that little bit of security there, little bit of security additionally on the Rillaboom. And with the Assault Vest as well, you've got the option then to uh, knock out the opposing Calyrex that could be an issue as well as how useful knockoff is in general, just removing items, which is probably more important in this format with a non-Dynamax format than it was previously. Um, Regilecki, again, sticking with the same one. The max speed, I feel like, personally, in this sort of format, you can't really... It, it's just my opinion, of course. A lot of other players might disagree, and there are good arguments for every kind of build of Regilecki, but I do feel like you don't really want to compensate with the speed... The speed kind of... The speed tie is the worst-case scenario, but you don't want to, ha like give that up almost you know you want to try and give yourself the best advantage to win that in those really awkward horrible situations where whoever gets the electro web off first is most likely going to win the match you know so you give yourself the best opportunities in that respect um Incineroar again kind of stem with the standard one because mind shout is annoying we're seeing a bit more of a, a surge in Groudon so the defensive capabilities of the Incineroar and personally from my point of view it's playing pretty well so you know until it stops becoming uh, so relevant we don't need to to uh, to change it up especially in this build where you know we don't worry so much about Xerneas because you've got that stack attacker that can just really single-handedly deal with it you know um, and then we've got the Indeedy female gives nice support to the Calyrex obviously with that psychic terrain uh, allows expanding force to turn into that uh, spread attack and then you've got options like follow me Great protection for Calyrex, helping hand, and then expanding force as well. Going with the Psychic Seed on there just to give a little bit of a defensive boost because the one thing about your redirection Pokemon is you want them to stick around on the field for as long as possible. I know I say this a lot, but it is just prolonging the lifespan of that Pokemon to allow it to do its job and make it a little bit more difficult for your opponent in these situations. So uh, this is the reason why we went full defensive. It is there as a support option, but it does have some uh, offensive capabilities as well. And then we move on to the Stack Attacker, which again is kind of like the other side of the offensive team under that trick room um you've got incineral rillaboom doesn't mind trick room so it can perform pretty well in there and it does so much work <laughs> stack attacker in this format it's great if you can get the trick room up and you've got a really good line of support here with that redirection which is amazing obviously you have to watch out for precipice blades and things like that but you do have wide guarding so you've got the options to kind of protect yourself while repositioning um and then you can try and get the trick room up as well with things like that double fake out which will really help you to be able to do that and once the trick room's up especially if your opponent's team doesn't really have the kind of tools to deal with that it's going to be very hard for them to deal with and like i say with the safety goggles you're not worrying so much about amoongus and especially that combination of xerneas and amoongus where you can just get rid of xerneas pretty pretty easily you know and the wide guard helps out a bunch against uh, various teams in this format so that is the Calyrex Stack Attacker team. And then we'll move on to the little bit more fun one. A bit risky. I don't know if I'd play this personally, but I think it's a lot of fun. We'll have a, a game or two with it if we can squeeze it in today. Again, seeing a lot of the kind of same sort of uh, Pokemon paired up with it. But we do have a few variations in the end here. Um, Calyrex, 
with the scarf. Uh, I'll explain the spread here because the other two were pretty self-explanatory, just max speed, max special attack. And at this point in the format, you know, with how Calyrex and when you're testing Calyrex, there's no need to, to spend a massive amount of time doing damage calculations. It's better just to jump in and kind of assess how things are going in games and then readdress those damage calculations. If there are attacks that you think, oh, we could probably have survived that. Um, so let's see, can we, can we afford to take a bit of attack out? Can we afford to take a bit of speed out? And in that instance, it makes sense. But like at the start of the format, start of team building, it's always a good idea just to try and jump in, get your feet wet and just kind of experience how the team's playing and um, so the scarf with this speed it allows you with the scarf to get the jump on uh, Kyogre modest max speed Kyogre in tailwind which is pretty nice so you're going to be able to get an attack off on them before they can do anything to you which is really nice and kind of same kind of move set we've uh, astral barrage expanding force shadow ball single target attack and then we've got draining kiss as well which gives you a nice option against something like urshifu which could be a little bit problematic uh, otherwise um and also mind chow and things like that but i mean you've got plenty of options against mind chow so like that that's you know it doesn't really matter too much but the scarf color x is really nice you can go modest with this one as well it does afford you that little bit of extra um uh, attack power which is really good and um if you can get yourself into a good position as an end game it's a phenomenal kind of cleanup crew pokemon to come in and just just get rid of whatever's kind of left reggie like again you know uh it's just doing Regieleki things it's good for pivoting it's good for board positioning with that it's good for speed control and it's good for just putting big damage on the field on common things like Incineroar like uh, Zapdos for instance and a bunch of other stuff so we've got the Regieleki in there and obviously helps out against those bulky waters that are slowly starting to kind of pick up in usage uh, Incineroar again very similar to how we've been playing it but it supports the Calyrex very well comes in and with that defensive capability I didn't mention it before but it does give you a little bit more of an advantage against something like Zashin um, just with that defensive bulk that you've got there so it's entirely up to you how you feel and like I say the, the big point about jumping in and testing teams before you worry too much about um, EV spreads and things like that is the fact that you'll be able to say well kind of don't need this defensive bulk it would be better suited and maybe special defense and that's the whole experience of it and how you kind of get to the end point with these teams um, obviously these are in the very early stages because we are in the early stages of format and then we move over uh, not in dd female we've got in dd male here so we've got the dude uh in dd here and uh with the focus sash makes a lot of sense just gives you that little bit of security plays really nicely with the color the psychic surge again for that psychic terrain really helps out um and it gives you a nice option to stop the trick room if uh that is going to be an issue for uh this team because obviously trick room going up can be a bit problematic for you so being able to kind of imprison that uh shut that down and also uh stop a opposing expanding force which and dazzling gleam which kind of helps out the zapdos in a lot of respects as well which is the next pokemon which kind of comes into play and i feel like a very nice partner for for color x because a lot of the time what you're going to see is uh players approaching the color x matchup with their incineral zapdos with that defiant ability really makes that a little bit more difficult for your opponent to kind of freely just do that and cycle the intimidates and try and cycle uh the fake outs as well so uh, Zapdos is a very good Pokemon for that in general and uh, if speed is an issue you can always fall back on Trick Room and use it yourself you know if you're up against Zash in late game you've got the opportunity to turn the Trick Room around you can always make use of that help support the Incineroar as well and um, so Zapdos not really too much to say pretty straightforward spread here uh, and Muset really standard but it does the job and then we'll move on to Selgo which I felt you know I was toying around with the last slot here uh, we went from Swampert was one option I really do like it gives you another option of being able to kind of uh, pivot out with flip turn and it gives you wide guard as well which can be really beneficial um, but I kind of ended up on a Selgo because I thought well it pairs super nicely with something like the, the Calyrex. Um, you're going to be able to uh, outspeed the Calyrex um, with the Cell Goal, with that Psychic Seed Boost, and you can kind of pair that nicely with Acid Spray to really start doing a lot of work to your opponents. And you've got the option then to, to punish things like Tornadus, which you'll outspeed, even in a Tailwind uh, with Encore, so you can lock them into that. You can Struggle Bug and you've got Final Gambit as well, so you can just chunk things in, in a non-Dynamax format. 
Final Gambit has a new lease of life as well. So they are the teams. Uh, what we're going to do is start off with the Calyrex Suicune. We'll have a couple of games like we do. Yveltal, one of the Pokemon that uh, I have been thinking about a lot, you know, if Calyrex does pick up in usage, uh, Yveltal is an extremely good Pokemon to uh, to utilize against something like Calyrex. So it means that it makes it a little bit more difficult to bring uh, as a lead, of course. Mregieleki here is good. The Gothitelle makes things a little bit more tricky as well, of course. Uh, okay, so I think what we'll do is Mianchao and Regieleki seem good. Calyrex and... Yeah, Rillaboom, I think. I think Rillaboom, we'll go with that. Okay, we got Reggie, Alecki, and Gothitelle. So we've got to contend with, obviously, Fake Out from the Gothitelle. Uh, we can Fake Out the Reggie Alecki if we like. Um, we could Electro Web just straight off the bat, but we've got to worry about Trick Room. But then on appearance, my opponent's team doesn't really look like they've got too much Trick Room, right? We could reposition ourselves. Now, we could just Volt Switch and then Fake Out into the Alecki. Um, and that will allow us okay so we just trade fake outs here which is which is kind of fine um we probably want to vault switch out though now although i do really want to electro electro web as well i think one of the things we could we've got to preserve our regieleki that's the big thing we could just close combat into their pause and regieleki yeah they do protect which is kind of fine um and we can readjust by bringing in um Calyrex is not a bad option because then the next turn, the only. Uh, Rillaboom. Nah. We'll bring in Calyrex. Yep, so we don't get that. And then Hypnosis, but it misses, which is good. Oh, and they got the Blunder policy, which is not ideal. But I don't think Gothitelle is going to be able to outspeed Calyrex still. So we'll Astro Barrage and we'll Wide Guard because I think they have to go for Electro Web. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't think Gothitelle's got the speed to be able to kind of get the jump on us at plus two. I could be wrong, could be wrong, but I'm I'm kind of sure that that is the case. So we get, uh, you can see the use there of, of Wide Guard, how well it kind of comes into play. And Steffi being very, very kind. But the game is not over yet because obviously the big, the big bads just entered the field which makes things very difficult for us now reggie alecki going to be the pokemon here to kind of help us um close this one out where we could protect and bring rillaboom in and then preserve something like yeah i think and then we got the fake out onto the veltal the next turn and we can go astral barrage it's a sucker punch yeah and then sacred fire do we take just about yeah oh the burn don't let us go down to the burn no, so we don't. Uh, yeah, and then we've got the fake, and, and we are plus two. So at this point, the Entai, um, we don't worry about Yveltal too much with Regieleki in the back, uh, especially with Mianchao, where we've got the fake out uh, active as well. So plus two should take down the Entai. It might be a Salt Vest. We'd have to be a little bit careful for that. Uh, obviously, we get the fake out off. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to get the Astro Barrage. So you can see, like, you've got ways around this um, sort of team. You've just got to play it very carefully. But the team's kind of, like, supported pretty well with, with everything that it kind of does. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Are they going to suck a punch? They're going to suck a punch for sure. There's no point in risking anything at this point. We'll just U-turn. Um, they're going to suck a punch there. And, uh, yeah, we'll get the, the Astro Barrage. Uh, and good game to Steffi. So here we go. Um, we'll have one more game of this team, then we'll move on to the others. I'm conscious of time, so hopefully. Is it better just to have one game with each team? Maybe, maybe. Let me know down in the comment section. We're obviously not going to be doing them on showdown for that much longer. Obviously, we're going to have Switch content next week. We do have the tour uh, going on tonight that we put up earlier in the week. We've got a bunch of entries. I think last time I looked, it was over 141. So if you're still available, would like to play in our weekly for Series 10 on the Switch, get involved. I'll remind you the code at the end of the episode. So here we go. A bit of a mirror. We've got the Shadow Rider with the Mian Chao, uh, Rillaboom, Regieleki, Entai, and Urshifu. So the big thing here, I think, is like Suiku can play a big part in this game for us because I think we like if we can utilize our tailwind like late on, then Calyrex can do a bunch of work against everything that my opponent's got. But we've got to kind of pave the way um for us to be able to do that in the first place. Which makes it pretty 
it, it does make it difficult. I'm not gonna, not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Um, okay. So I think what we'll do is we'll lead Regieleki. Do we need Incineroar here? It definitely helps against the Rillaboom, but I don't know if it's like super necessary. I think we'll bring Rilla and then we'll have Calyrex Suicune in the back. And we've got a pretty free Electroweb here, if I'm honest, which sets us up for the Calyrex to kind of come in late game, you know? Um, and even if we lose Regieleki here, it's not, it's definitely not a bad thing. And we can just fake out the Urshifu. The other thing to think here is, do we fake out the Urshifu or do we just grassy glide the horse, you know, or the horsey? And we fake out. Okay, well, we get some chip damage onto the, the Mian Chao, which is, which is always really nice. Um, and now what we can do is, uh, we have to protect Regieleki, of course. And probably protect, we just double protect. The, the problem doing this is if your opponent faints and then you get really punished for it, you know? Which is which is not ideal, um, but I feel like they're more in the option where they have to fake out Regieleki rather than faint, you know. Because they, if they faint and we just attack, then it gets pretty pretty rough for them. So we could get a cheeky grassy glide off, but I kind of want to preserve Rillaboom's health as much as possible here. Yeah, the fake out comes out, but like a really solid play there, you know, like the mind game player would be fainting in that situation. And that just punishes us. And that's what makes this team so dangerous, you know. Um, okay, well, we'll Volt Switch out onto the horsey. We can then, I mean, we could potentially double up into it. But I think what we'll do is, yeah, they're wide guard. So that was wasteful, but we'll be able to Volt Switch out. We get Suicune onto the field and Suicune not super important or as important at this point because even though it's going to get a bunch of its health back uh, we still have grassy glide and you would imagine the horse is probably in range from that grassy glide now um we can try and tailwind don't know if we're going to be able to get it off though that's a big thing uh i think we have to protect as well with with rilla to try and make use of that grassy glide the next turn let's see now we might get a i think we will get a tailwind up which is amazing okay so this that kind of locks the game for us there um getting that fake out and then we've got grassy glide um we could u-turn and predict that the horse protects but i don't think it does i don't think it does yeah we're probably better off just grassy gliding at this point icy wind in uh, no no snarling grassy glide just in case that yeah the horse protects the horse protects it makes sense I thought we'd maybe see a U-turn come out from, from Monkey, Monkey, but that's not going to happen. Calyrex can come in now. We've got the Tailwind set up. We can just go Astro Barrage. The Grassy Glide's gone, and we can just U-turn into the Monkey and uh, take down that Rillaboom. Oh, I forgot. The Urshifu's still in the back. I forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot. Okay, well, I totally forgot about this. Wow. Okay. Well, 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 well. It's not over just yet. It's not over just yet. Um, but I mean, we do have Electro Web. We can switch. We can Electro Web switch into Rillaboom, um, and then Calyrex is going to be. It's the it's the Urshifu that's the big the big problem here, you know. Um, and it's probably better off going for a Volt Switch into it uh, and switching into Rilla. But then again, we could get ourselves into a terrible spot by doing this. Hmm. They're going to protect. I think they double protect here. So I think we're pretty safe switching into Rillaboom. And I think we just Electroweb. Yeah, protect and sucker. Oh no, they're going Wicked Blow. But, uh, that's the Magnet Boost there helping us out a bunch. So yeah, okay. Now we've just got the Grassy Glide. And uh, we do pick up the win. So very good game to my opponent. Lucky Tiger. Made it difficult in that end game. Um, but you just like that's a thing just be careful the whole time so we'll move on now to the Calyrex stack attacker team so we've got Zashian, Nihiligo, Nihiligo another thing to mention as well really good Pokemon in this format you think of Pokemon that can deal quite effectively with Incineroar and Rillaboom and Nihiligo like fits the fits that bill pretty well so we've got uh, Landorus, Suicune gonna provide Snarl, Tailwind support, all those nasty things, uh, Amoongus, and then Incineroar. So, I mean, we're pretty free if we want to lead with something like Calyrex here. Um, 
we could even lead. There's no terrain on my opponent's side of the field, so we could even lead like Indeedy here. You know, I put this in a, a great spot. Um, the only issue is the Suicune, which which can be a little bit problematic, of course. Um, and we probably want Incineroar as well, just to help us a little bit with that end game against the Zashian. So I think these three, it's just which one do I lead with? Maybe Incineroar is not a bad play, and then we can bring in Indeedy and then Rillaboom. And I feel like the whole center of the team's around this Calyrex. So if Calyrex goes down early, we're in a bit of trouble. We're in a bit of trouble. Uh, okay, well, they've led absolutely phenomenally against this, and it's going to be difficult now to deal with that Incineroar, which I've kind of really overlooked here. Um, but we can get ourselves out of this, for sure. So we can protect, and I think we can parting shot out onto the asshole, which is Suicune, which is a great nickname. So they get the Tailwind up, which is, yeah, fine. They parting shot out on us. We parting shot out on them. It's the it's the snarl that makes uh, Suicune so dangerous, you know, against Calyrex um, and it bulk in general. That's what you know. We saw it perform very well in those last examples. Um, yeah, and they're going to get the Zashin in now, which is which is good. But I mean, it's good for us that we're able to get uh, our Intimidate off the field. Now you've got to imagine that Incineroar probably comes in here. Uh, but we can switch our own Incineroar in. Um, and I think we just fake out the Zash in. <sighs> Makes it tough. But Incineroar likely to come in, I would imagine. I would imagine. I don't think they leave this Suicune out on the field kind of in a position where it's 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 pretty threatened by the Rillaboom. But at the same time, the Zash is kind of helping keep check. Okay, so. We could have went for that cheeky grassy glide could have should have they go for the snarl just to kind of cover bases which makes a lot of sense they've got that active fake out but i think the one thing that we probably want to try and do is uh, uh we could be we could get some um, we need to get in center off the field because i think we need to be quite proactive about how we're utilizing um our incinero for when that zashin does come back onto the field skull coming out doing a decent chunk of damage get another parting shot there and then we can bring the really boom back onto the field which is which is good uh because then we've got the option now where we can follow me with the indeedy and go for that grassy glide into this slot which is quite nice um or we could go for a knockoff into the suicune as well um just because i feel like suicune probably does it switch out here i don't know i don't know if it does you know well we're not intimidated that's the big thing for us where we could potentially just fake out the incineral or we could help in hand grassy glide here which is also an option um incineral not going to be able to take us down and whatever comes in you know i think we help in hand yeah okay the moong is the best the best of the bad bunch um and we'll probably take yeah okay and suicune will come back in there i think Oh no, it's the Zashin. Okay, well. This is a problem here because the Moongus have got a free spore into this slot, which is not ideal. We can protect Indeedy and just switch into Incineroar, but it's a pretty free substitute. Or... Hmm. A Sacred Sword... Okay, well, I think we're, our hand's kind of forced at this point. Um, do we protect or do we expand in force? I just don't want Indeedy going to sleep, that's a thing. But the expand in force damage might be quite nice into the Amoongus. Unless we see Incineroar switch in there. But I think it's going to be a spore. Yeah, okay, well, they get the sub up, which is fine. We've got the option where we can attack into this slot now, but you've got to imagine that the... You've got to imagine that the Incineral comes in there. Um, and we can try and just protect, yeah. So we'll get another parting shot off. Sacred Sword makes a lot of sense. Should proc our berry. Okay. And then we can get... 
could we get Calyrex on the field now? I don't feel like it's a great idea, to be honest. Not in front of the Incineroar. The Rillaboom gives us that fake out option, of course. Um, the thing is, we need to get rid of... We need to get rid of the Zacian sub. That's a big thing. Yeah, I'm going to take another one here. Behemoth Blade. Take that pretty well. Parting shot into the boom. Okay, and Amunga's coming back onto the field now. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. This is this is difficult. Like if we can get Zash, like Calyrex on the field now, this is like this would be ideal for us. In all honesty, um, I think a knockoff will probably get rid of the sub now, and then we can go for the follow me, which we don't we don't get. But we lose in DD. Okay, so it kind of opens the door up for us a little bit. Sub fades and uh, spore so that's that's good in a way because it now gives us the option to get a big attack off onto at least the amoongus uh where we can go for a u-turn there um what do we switch straight out because they're likely to protect i think and then incineral come in on this slot that would be my guess um and we can ask for a barrage and do that and expect the Incineroar to come in there. I think that's what will happen, but who knows? The Amoongus sticks around on the field. Uh, it's not ideal because there's a chance that it will be able to get the Spore off if we miss the knockout. But the Zacian's not... Yeah, Incineroar, okay. Let's see that Protect. That's what we want. Oh, no Protect. No Protect. So we get some damage off. That's a bulky old Xerneas. It goes for the... Uh... Okay. Well, we'll be able to kind of get the Incineroar back in. Which definitely helps us out a bit. We don't get the Intimidate off, which is a nice play from my opponent. We can fake out. Hope we've got the faster fake out. We can go for an Astral Barrage into the Zashian. Break that sub. And then we've got it kind of pinned this next turn uh, along with that Incineral. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. They didn't. I don't know if we're faster. We should be faster than them. We should be. We can go Flare Blitz, I think. A Flare Blitz, oh, the problem is we'll probably end up activating a Berry on it. Unless it is. No, it's not a Salt Vest. It's definitely Berry, which is the big problem. Um, I think we have to re readjust our board position here. I think we have to parting shot out onto the Zashin. But I think the Zashin probably... It's got enough health to get a sub up as well. I think we parting shot out and protect. Yeah, they protect. Okay, this is good. Now we get the Rillaboom in. Now we got that fake out. Now we've got a way to deal with the Zashin. And the Grassy Terrain back up. It makes it difficult for the Suicune to come back onto the field and that Amoongus as well. So, um, now we can just... I think we knock off into the Incineroar slot. Although... No, I think we have to fake it out because we're not going to be able to... Yeah, and just Astro Barrage. Yeah, fake out Astro Barrage. And this should... We'll probably proc a Berry. Yeah. Ooh, no Berry. What is that Incineroar? Safety goggles then, potentially. Um, but the Astro Barrage is going to get the Incineroar now. We've kind of got my opponent pinned where we can just go and knock off into the Amoongus. Uh, Astro Barrage again. And my opponent doesn't have too many options now, especially with... Like, if it comes down to the Zashian and the, 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 the Suicune, you know? Um, so from a really tough situation, you can see how you can kind of eke out these positions. But you've got to be, like, on point the whole time. And the game's not over yet, you know? The game is not over. Um, my opponent's still got all four Pokemon. Um, and we are down in numbers. So Suicune coming in. That's fine. We just need to remove the Amoongus, which we are able to do. They're going to get the Incineral back in and get the Tailwind up, which is a little bit, yeah, awkward for us for sure. Because now they got that active fake out. It makes it very tricky for us to kind of, um, yeah, they fake out Rillaboom. Fake out Rillaboom. Will Grassy Glide and Astral Barrage. Yeah. They'll get the Tailwind up. But we'll be able to remove the Incineroar, do a good damage. And it's, we can, we're going to be able to pick up the Suicune in the next turn. Uh, and switch into Incineroar. Grassy Glide into the Suicune. 
and then stall out this tailwind because that's the big thing for us here so Cinero back onto the field hopefully we can take oh we don't get it we don't get it can we oh we survive okay that's good that's good that's good that's that's some good calc in there that's a brilliant play by my opponent though in all honesty but the grassy terrain ending though that is terrible for us it's terrible timing for us um what do we do we need to stall out this tailwind that's all we that's literally all we need to do stall out the tailwind that's all we need to do i think we grassy glide and we'll fake out sif is it enough it's not enough they get the burn though which is not what we need not what we need at all oh and we go down okay well we got one turn of tailwind we can protect and then we've got this game wrapped up so they can go for i think we have to go for the flare blitz into sif the zashian um my opponents play this amazingly well amazingly well gotta hope we survive this which we do uh we get the sub and then lock it up and what a game for us to uh to have with this one team uh so yeah that's very good very good game to my opponent very fine margins and uh a bit of a longer one today we'll end with the scarf calyrex Whew. And we'll see wow this is nearly 40 minutes i'm going to try and chop it down so it's not that long because i i do bear in mind that i know not everyone's got a bunch of time to sit and watch this but hopefully you found it enjoyable i do try to cut the videos up into segments so if you just want to see a particular team then you can come to that segment and kind of watch it in your own time great team we've got a whole up next playing with the ferrothorn the mind show um the gastrodon landerus and the reggie alecki okay well we can go scarf mod, can't we? With the Calyrex. I think we're going to need Intimidate and Incineroar here for sure. Um, Wide Guard's going to be a bit of an issue for us, of course. So it's something we need to, to kind of consider in this one. Actually, no, we'll go a Calyrex, we'll go Indeedy, we'll go Incineroar, and I think Zapdos, to be honest, because the Intimidate there as well. The Regieleki is going to be really awkward to deal with course but i think the two ground types put me off bringing aleki to this one a little bit so here we go let's see what scarf calyrex can do um hmm. the terrain being up doesn't help the wide guard situation of course but we do have a uh, shadow ball and we can kind of cover bases with an expanded force if they don't go for that fake out shadow ball hopefully is enough to get uh there's a wide guard, of course. But it does get there. Yeah. And now, now the momentum swings, right? Now the momentum swings. So we're plus one. Ferrothorn coming in. Makes things a little bit more tricky, of course. Um But we're not we're not like pinned to the spot where we need to keep everything on the field, you know? Uh do we want to keep Calyrex out? I kind of would like to get rid of the main chow. Um and then we can take advantage of because gyro ball is likely to come into this slot now i think um so i think what we'll do is we'll expand in force and hope that the mindshare doesn't go for it again oh no they don't okay they switch into hot oh, we miss out on the intimidate there which is a little bit of a shame get the knockoff nice option there on on ferret thorn uh, and we see the forfeit very good game to my opponent. I think they're still in a good chance to kind of win this game for sure. Uh, they had the tools to do it. But we'll wrap up there, friends. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Hope it's been at least a little bit educational in a way and entertaining in other ways as well. So tonight we are streaming. Uh, we will be streaming over on Twitch tonight. I'm going to go over to Twitch. I do plan on streaming a lot more to YouTube, but I think for tonight, uh, the setup's there. So I'm going to be playing the tour uh, that we'll be playing uh, for, for today. It's start happening today, later on today, uh, kicking off at 8 p.m. UK time. Um, so just look on your switch if you're a bit unsure with what time it all it's kicking off. It will show you exactly what in your kind of your time when it's starting, when it'll run to. If you are playing, it'd be great if I bump into you and I'll be cutting up the uh, the stream highlights and we'll be putting them on to the channel next week. Um, I do have something spicy that I wanna bring. I'm not decided on whether I will that bring it yet or not. Uh, it's a little bit more fun. I think it'll make the stream a little bit entertaining as well, uh, but I might just end up bringing something serious. 
in the main uh, instead anyway so like i say thanks so much for tuning in all the poker pieces down below have a great rest of your day have a great weekend and i'll catch you all again very soon